So how do you do binary trees in Java? How do you program binary trees in Java? <coughs> well, first uh, you have to um, define an abstract class binary tree and here we're using a generic class we're saying the nodes we're defining a binary tree whose nodes are of any type T. Well so what functions do we need with binary trees? Well here's just an example of some of the functions that we might need. Well we, we, are, we have to be able to find the root of a binary tree so that returns uh, uh, an object of type T because the root of the tree is a node. Uh, we can have to we can find the left node of a binary tree the left sorry the left subtree of a binary tree and that's a binary tree the right subtree of a binary tree is also a binary tree we can check um, whether the binary tree is empty or not we can work out the depth of the binary tree and we can work out the number of nodes that it's got so this is an abstract class now there are two sorts of binary tree there's either an empty binary tree or a non-empty binary tree so now what we have to do is define all these functions, all these methods, for an empty binary tree. So how do we do them? So here we extend, we've got a class called empty tree t, which extends binary tree. So this is a this isn't an abstract class, so we have to actually give we actually have to give bodies to all the methods that, that we had in binary tree. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six methods that we actually have to instantiate. So how, what's the root of the empty binary tree? Well, there isn't one, so you throw, an, e you throw a, um, uh, an exception. Similarly, there isn't a left subtree of an empty tree, there isn't a right one. Uh, to test whether it's empty, well, the empty tree binary tree is empty. Um, how do you check whether one binary tree is equal to another? Well, if the one we're uh, checking whether it's equal to is empty, then it's then it is equal to, to this binary tree, the empty binary tree. The depth of the binary tree is zero and the number of nodes of a binary tree is also zero. So that's the sort of simple case when, when the tree is empty. So if we look at the more complicated case, the non-empty binary tree, we have, um, two, we have three fields for this binary tree. <coughs> we have the root, which is of type T, and we have the left and right subtree, which are both binary tree T. So how do we construct a binary tree? Well, uh, well, constructors are, are always the same. You have a parameter for each of the fields, and you just assign values to all the uh, to all the fields from the parameters. That's just a typical constructor, as you do for almost all um, objects that you define in this way. So. The root of the binary tree, well that's the root, so you return the root. The left is, is this left subtree, the right is the right subtree. Um, how do you check um, whether a binary tree called T is equal to this one? Well it mustn't be empty, because if it's empty, this one's not empty, because it's got a root and a left and a right, so it mustn't be empty. The roots must be equal, whatever, so that those will be two objects of type T, so provided T has a, an equality, there's equality defined for these for t. It'll work, and then the left the left subtrees must be equal, and the right subtrees must be must be equal. How do we work out the depth of a non-empty binary tree? Well, if we let d l be the depth of the left binary tree and d r be the depth of the right binary tree, then if d l is less than r d r, it'll be one plus d r. Otherwise, it'll be one plus d l. So this is like the maximum of the depths of the left and the right subtree plus one. And how do we count the number of nodes of the binary tree? Well, it's one for the root plus the number of nodes in the left plus the number of nodes in the right. So notice all these functions are, are recursive, aren't they? Because we num nodes call num nodes, depths call depths, equals calls equals, and because this is a recursive data data structure all the functions that you define on it will be recursive. So how do we use these functions? Well, how do we use these functions? So here's an example of using the binary tree functions we've just done. So here we're constructing a binary tree um, called T1, and here we're using new because it's the constructor. The root is the integer 3, and the left and the right subtrees are both empty. So we're constructing a tree whose root is 3, and whose left subtrees are both empty. So then here we're constructing, constructing another tree uh, whose um, 
called T5, which is whose root is 8, and both the left and right subtrees are empty. Now T2 is another binary tree, and the root is 7, the left one is T1, and the r right one is T5. So we're building up a more complicated binary tree. So this one has 7 as the root, it'll have 8 on the it'll have 3 on the left and 8 on the right. And here T3 is made up of two copies of T2, etc. So we can make up new binary trees here. So let's uh, just play with that for a little bit. So if we um <coughs> check it compiles. Now let's um if we want to at the moment we haven't got anything for printing out binary trees but we can certainly print out the number of nodes so uh, it, we can say t3 system dot out dot println system dot out dot println t1 dot num nodes There's one error there. It's not called num nodes. Let's check what it's called. It's called num nodes with a little n. Okay, so we have to change that to. Ooh, what, what have I done with that? It's gone. So let's. Um, there it is. So we into little n there. So now we compile it and run it. And notice the answer is 1 because that uh, this tree has got a root and two empty subtrees so it's got one node. If we did it with uh, this one, if we did it with T2 we'd get one for the root, uh, T1 has got um, one and T5 has got one. So if I did it with T2 I'll get if I do it with T2, I should get three nodes. Three nodes. There, three, that's the answer. If I do it with T4, no, T3, I've got T2, which gives me three, another T2, which is three, and the root, which is one, so that should give me seven. So if I do it with T3, it should give me seven. Yep, seven, there we go. So th this is just how to construct binary trees using the constructor. So these can get as complicated as you like. You build them up with expressions like this using new. Using new. And I don't think, we don't even have to put new integer. I think we could just say one on its own. That would probably work. Let's just try. I'm not sure. Um, we can compile that and see what happens. Say that'll be shorter to write the... Um, to write the trees. I'm not sure if that works. We can find out. Yep, it did. So we don't even need to put the new integer bit. So so we the all these could be simplified. And so um so similarly we could work out the depth etc of all these binary trees. But unfortunately we can't actually print out these trees yet because uh, we haven't got a way of doing that.